how many people know there's a amateur radio station on the ISS? Of course. <laughs> Um, cool. No, no. Um, this, those pictures at the end. Sorry, they're a bit dark. Um, we we organised a ISS contact with the South Hobart Primary School um, back a little while ago. Now, uh, absolutely fantastic. I still have adult students now who <laughs> come up to me and go, "You're that guy that <laughs> did that contact with those astronauts." So it was a real buzz, real buzz in the school. Fantastic. And a real um, demonstration of uh, what amateur radio is capable of, uh, and they do they do one or two contacts with schools a week. Um, so it's r really there's a wait list <laughs> uh, for contacts. And that was that's uh, Commander Doug Willock, um, who was the guy that um, South Hobart spoke to. So uh, so really good, fantastic. So amateur radio is a hobby. Uh, and uh, the intention of the licensing and the regulation of it is to facilitate that hobby. Um, it's authorised uh, under an amateur radio licence, so uh, and there are all sorts of licences that the ACMA looks after. There's um, Citizen Band, which is also a class licence actually, Land Mobile, Point to Point, Broadcasting, Maritime, Aeronautical, etc, etc. So, we operate on particular bands that are allocated to us uh, specifically for amateur radio use and we also there's this concept of being primary and secondary in particular bands so if we're primary in a band that means it's the primary use for that band is amateur radio and we we don't share it with anybody but we do have particular bands where we share with other services and we are considered to be secondary so if they want to use the band um, they have every right because they're primary in that band um, so if we we can't you know put our hand up and claim you're causing interference or whatever else because <laughs> we're not primary in that band um, so so there is that concept of primary and secondary um, Lots of uses, um, many, many uses, uh, and in fact, if we have a look up on the wall up here, there is the Australian radio frequency spectrum, goes from what we call DC to daylight, um, and it shows each of those colours on that chart are different uses for the radio spectrum. The pink bits, it's a bit unfortunate that, but the pink bits are amateur radio and if you have a bit of a close look when you when we have a break have a bit of a look there are a lot of pink bits um, and so we have little bits of spectrum all over the place that we can actually use from very low frequency all the way up to really 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 high frequency so now we organize ourselves we have to organize ourselves because obviously there's a lot of amateurs all trying to use exactly the same bits of the spectrum so we come up with things called amateur band plans. Now these are these are just agreements. They're not law. They're not set in concrete. They're you know they wouldn't stand up, I suspect, in a court of law <laughs> at all. But they are an agreement within the amateur community to use particular parts of that spectrum for particular things. So it can be somewhere on that you know in that band there can be Morse code. There can be satellites, there can be um, digital modes, there can be voice, there can be all sorts of things. Um, and there's many, many different modes that we can use. So there's a bit of an agreement. There is a copy of the amateur band plan in the back of the foundation license manual. Um, what I would suggest though is you go and have a look at the WIA website because the band plan actually changes semi-regularly. There are lots of things going on worldwide around um, trying to align different countries' al amateur allocations <laughs> across other countries. And so there are semi-regular changes that go on around the band plan as to what we use it for. So pl please, please, please have a, have a bit of a look. Uh, and you get an idea, if, if you have a listen across the band, you get, a, you, you get an idea about what, um, what different parts of that band get used for. Down low, you'll hear lots of Morse code. <laughs> uh, 
up up higher you'd hear voice in the middle segments you'll probably hear some digital modes some whirring and whining and whatever else so you, you get a bit of a feel for for what happens in what part of the band now at the end of each of these sections there's a bit of a indicative questions that potentially would be asked um, typical assessment question amateur radio activity is authorized under and I think we know what it is. It's C, an amateur radio class license. So this is the sort of level. Very easy. Um, and uh, just gives you a bit of an idea about some of the questions that you might come across in the uh, assessment. 